live in beautiful downtown Boston. This is the Jeff Santos Show on the Revolution Radio Network. Rebuilding America together. Now, here's Jeff. Thank you, Ron, and good afternoon, Americans, and welcome to the Jeff Santos Show. We are live in the South Coast uh, here in uh, the great uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the northeastern part of America. It's great to be with you uh, across the globe today, of course, online, revolutionradionetwork.com. Uh, we have a great program for you today with our uh, Renaissance man, Mark Taylor Canfield. Of course, uh, you can catch him on Democracy Watch News and a number of other news outlets, and right here every Tuesday at 5.30. We're going to uh, talk about the stimulus. We're going to talk about Donald Trump's insane, disgusting remarks last night about basically choosing profits over people and their people's health. We'll get into all of that uh, with our guest, Robert Borsage, the uh, Campaign for America's Future, part of People's Action. We'll uh, talk with him at about uh, 3.30 at 4 o'clock. Alan Grayson, former representative from Florida, will join us. Uh, of course, you represent Orlando two different times, uh, two different districts, I should say. At 4.30, Robert Craig will join us in his usual spot. Uh, of course, Wisconsin Citizen Action, also part of People's Action. Uh, 5 o'clock, Melissa Tomlinson, best uh, name in politics. Uh, she's the executive director of Badass Teachers. Uh, so that's the lineup, folks. We're going to be uh, taking your calls, of course, at 844-713-3459. That's 844 844- 713-3459. And let me just uh, <clears throat> state that we're going to I mean, opening the phone lines up uh, throughout the next three hours. We're going to try to do this going forward if everything goes well. And I think it's, it's important to sort of get your voice, you know, not only on the stimulus package, but where we're going as a country. Our next guest is some 3,000 miles away, but he is uh, worth waiting for, folks. Every Tuesday at about uh, 5.30 Eastern, 2.30 Pacific, we get a chance to talk to the Renaissance man of the Jeff Santo Show. He is uh, from the Live 206. You can uh, watch and uh, read his great uh, work on Democracy Watch News. You can hear him here every 5.30, every uh, Tuesday at 5.30 Eastern Time, 2.30 Pacific. He is a great journalist. He is Mark Taylor Canfield. MTC, how are you today? I hope you're feeling safe and healthy, my man. Well, I'm doing okay. My life hasn't slowed down a bit, though, Jeff. I know a lot of other people are trying to figure out what to do with all their time when they're not you know, telecommuting to work or whatever. But uh, I'm a little sleep deprived as usual. I got my Thai tea here, which is my secret powers. And so <laughs> I'm ready to go. Um, Washington State is in pretty much lockdown after last night Governor James Lee gave a video address to the state and told everyone to stay home unless you absolutely need to go out. But here's some some caveats with that, Jeff. Yeah, the state's in lockdown, but you know what? You can still buy medicinal marijuana. You can still go to the pot shops. It's considered an essential business in the state. Let me ask you a couple of questions about that, because when I lived in Boston, um, you know, I lived about a block away from one of these shops, and people would line up, you know, not six feet away, but, I mean, they're right on top of each other because they want their stuff. Um, and I worry about that, and not only in the uh, social distancing part, but, you know, it's it's a place where people congregate, obviously. Um, and, you know, it, it, I'm surprised that the governor, who has done some really great things, uh, you know, as governor in your state, has allowed this. Was there pressure? I know the industry is big in Washington State, as it is in Colorado. Um, you know, was there pressure on him to keep these uh, these things open? Marijuana is considered a medicinal substance in Washington State. So doctors have actually held, you know, prescribed. And so uh, you have medicinal marijuana patients, and it is very helpful for people with chronic conditions and chronic pain. And so it is considered an essential. And let's face it, Jeff, I mean, this is Seattle. So, you know, marijuana is essential to the culture here. It's more important than... Alcohol, that's for sure. The bars are closed, by the way. Yeah, so yeah. you're not gonna get you're not gonna be out drinking anywhere in Seattle right now. You can still, you know, go to the grocery stores. We don't have state liquor stores anymore because the uh, cannabis and liquor control board gotten rid of their liquor state liquor stores, but I don't know if the private liquor stores are open. I kinda doubt it. I just know that the pot shops are open, they're practicing very strict rules in terms of, you know, where you're not allowed in the building. 
until your order is ready. So it's like the, the restaurants, which are also open, a few of them, for takeout orders. So what happens is you order ahead of time, and then you don't go into the building until your order is ready. And then one person is allowed in at a time. You go in and you pick up whatever it is you ordered, and then you leave. And there's a six-foot rule, and they're wearing gloves and practicing all sorts of disinfectant and sanitizing regimes in those shops. But, you know, but there's a much bigger issue here. Unfortunately, in some ways, you know, we may not be getting all the answers from, from politics, but we have this issue of the president talking about the ill effects, not, you know, medical effects, but economic effects of this whole right. situation. Right. Oh, yeah. We've been talking about the entire the entire afternoon. Yeah. Uh, I thought I'm outraged, outraged that the, the, the so-called leader of, of the free world, the, the president of the United States, is attempting, and you know it's all over the news, uh, you know, to 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 basically uh, connect the idea of losing money and 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 basically de-emphasize people's lives. It's it's unbelievable. And then, of course, the lieutenant governor of Texas, I don't know if you heard about this or saw this, uh, saying that, you know, um, people over the age of 65, seniors, they make the ultimate sacrifice and basically kill themselves. I mean, what kind of thought process by political leaders, as you said, uh, to, to think of these things and to be disre- disregarding the health of fellow Americans? I mean, you put profit over people. I mean, that's the line, but that's the reality of it. And my opinion, you know, Trump should be uh, removed from office just for even announcing that. And he doubled down on it today, talking about Easter. I don't know how people in Seattle are reacting, but it's just disgusting. Well, my job is a journalist. I mean, the reason that my life hasn't slowed down is because it's really important for journalists to stay on top of this and try to share information with folks. So at Democracy Watch News, we're working on a report. I'm watching all of this, and I and I know that I have some important information that I need to get out to people in Washington State, so that's my main priority. But the, at the same time, um, I also see other things going on, and I do see this, you know, sort of nastier side of capitalism, which is was kind of showing itself. And also, the fact that a pandemic like this and public health issues like this show the vulnerabilities and weaknesses of of a mainly capitalistic system. I mean, a mixed economy would serve us much better in a situation like this. You know, national health care would serve us much better. Um, Basic guaranteed income, um, all sorts of services that the government will be providing now because we're in a crisis should have been there to begin with, and we should have been much more prepared for this crisis to begin with. We, we should have been preparing for this a year ago, but that being said, um, there are some important things going on in Washington State, and for, for people who might hear this broadcast, one of the things that you should know is that there is a website that's dedicated to the Washington State government's uh, addressing this issue, and it's coronavirus.wa.gov. And that is a place to go to get any of your um, questions answered if you live in Washington State. My council member represents me on the city council, Andrew Lewis, you know, Robert Reich's protege there. He has right, done a good right. job in posting online you know, resources that people um, can access. And one of the things that people should know in this area is that there are some grants for small businesses that are available. And so if you contact your state representative on the, in the state legislature or your city council member, if you happen to be in Seattle, um, there is a website that you can go to to get more information about grants. There's also, Jeff, actually some grants for artists, musicians, actors, um, people in, in the arts who have also been suffering greatly um, because there's no performances going on. So the, the city of Seattle through their emergency civil order declared by Jenny Durkin, has set aside some funds, also with the help of the city council, has set aside some funds. And by the way, the city council is meeting remotely, so there are no public meetings at the moment. But you can um, access that information also through the city of Seattle website. And I'm not sure that there's that that's getting out there, Jeff, at this point. I'm not sure that there's really much information available for musicians, artists, actors, you know, dancers, people who make their money off of the arts. Who, and artists, you know, painters like my ex-girlfriend who, who, you know, has had to cancel art exhibit shows. So there is some funding available for that. This is all what, you know, normally people would call socialism, but it's happening because of this pandemic. And it's really interesting to see uh, a lot of online concert series 
happening. Um, there was an online birthday party that I was invited to. So people are finding all sorts of ways of of interacting with people. There are chats going on online, online jamming. There's a couple of websites where musicians actually get together and perform live. But the concert series um, that are happening seem to be really popular right now. That seems to be what musicians are pretty much doing. And I've been trying, you know, trying to get out the word about that too. There's all sorts of ways that people are trying to be creative and adapt to the situation, you know, but as I can tell you though, as a resident of Seattle, um, sitting down and watching Governor Jay Inslee's address to the state was felt what must have been a little bit like folks watching FDR's fireside chats during the Great Depression because in my opinion, you know, he probably is up to this task, Jeff. You know, I've met him. I think he's a pretty pretty motivated, compassionate kind of guy and well disposed to taking on these kind of major challenges. He, he did do uh, an amazing job in countering uh, Donald Trump's That's immigration great. policies. I don't think uh, the state has lost any of the lawsuits. I think our Attorney General Bob Ferguson just the other day was, was uh, claiming that we have sued the Trump administration 50 times on environmental and immigration issues mostly, and so far have won every one of those lawsuits. So um, Bob Ferguson has a perfect record right now. So um, we did have you know, a civil emergency declared in 1999 during the World Trade Organization demonstrations, although that turned out to be sort of a political decision that had you know, civil rights implications. Um, but this is a different matter. People, you know, we all have a stake in the success of the state's public health policies. So it may not be a comfortable feeling when state government officials invoke emergency powers that allow them to make decisions that affect everybody's daily lives because that's not, you know, optimal for the democratic society. So we can only hope that this is temporary and that those people in power, like Inslee, uh, actually have our best interests in mind and that they're competent and sound of mind. You know, and I'm lucky enough to live in a state with some very effective and progressive representatives like Congressman uh, from Jayapal, City Council Member Shama Sawant. And although our Mayor Jenny Durkin has been criticized in the past for being influenced by powerful businesses interests like Amazon, she was among the first public officials in the nation to declare a state of emergency. So no. this is a, a ask, time when I'm thinking how important it is to have people who represent you in government that you can trust. Well, speaking of trust, uh, there's a big, big contingent, even though he didn't win the primary last time around, he won it in 16 in a landslide, and it seems to be obviously a lot of progressive people and people that uh, uh, showed up at the home there in Tacoma uh, to, uh, to cheer on Senator Sanders. How are people who are, you know, big Sanders supporters uh, looking at uh, him right now? I mean, we've had a kind of a pause uh, in the campaign, in a sense, some states are postponing their primaries to be held in April until June. Uh, others, like we just talked to Robbie Craig in Wisconsin, are scared of the uh, Republicans doing something, so they're you know, not uh, moving it yet in Wisconsin's on the 7th. But others are. And um, I'm wondering how people feel about Senator Sanders now, and should he be saying something on the Senate floor? Should he be uh, you know, vocalizing his call for you know, the 2000 a month? The people who are going to be unemployed, having to pay rent, and don't have any way to do it. What are you hearing from those folks? You know, most people are talking about public health issues right now, and there there is some politics going on. There was actually an international town hall called by the uh, Socialist Alternative Party, um, Shama Sawan, our city council member. So just the other day, there was an online town hall where some representatives of Democratic Socialists from all over the world were talking about. You know, the need for people to to think about having a permanent safety net and having a lot of these issues taken care of before we could get into a crisis like this, mm-hmm. which is what a lot of socialist programs advocate for. As far as politics are concerned, I mean, there there is politics going on. There were people really upset about, well, what was trending last night on Twitter was hashtag general strike because there were so many people upset. And what the Trump administration has been saying about Trump himself has been saying about, you know, uh, restarting the economy and stuff. Right, but, exactly. You know, all I can say to those guys and his billionaire friends is like, you know, I know you guys are really concerned about losing some of your stock portfolio, the value of your stock portfolios. And I realize there are people with 401ks whose retirement funds are really suffering right now. And I, I have totally have sympathy for you. But at the same time, you know, while some people are worrying about their stock market portfolio, I'm kind of worried about where I'm going to get some toilet paper. So right. let's have a reality check here. Exactly. I mean, that's where we're at. And people are worried about rent, and they're worried about other things that they need to pay. 
um, and, and it's not easy. Uh, it's 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 disgusting that the leaders of the free world and Donald Trump is is on the uh, television screens right now as we speak, um, and you know, and it's you know, it's just a lot of poppycock right now. Um, talk to me a little bit um, in in you know how people are still sort of doing their own thing, meaning, you know, people, I, I've noticed a lot of people are, you know, still going for their morning or afternoon runs, but, you know, that has consequences, particularly in the city. People, you know, are running and they're, they're sweating and they're stopping at the light to get from point A to point B, and, of course, you're there, and, you know, how is that whole thing, uh, people are sort of getting a little bit concerned that there's a little, we want people to exercise, and that's important, but to take it to the extreme, uh, I think is also somewhat, again, a selfish act. Uh, what are you seeing on that front? People should be taking their cue from what Governor Inslee said last night. Uh, he's ordered a closure of all non-essential businesses. Um, but, you know, unless, so unless you're a first responder, a medical professional, health care worker, grocery store, drugstore employee, you know, and we never, never before did we realize how important these people are to our community, right? But according to Governor Inslee, people should stay home for the most part. Now, he did say that he thinks, and I agree with him, that, you know, going for a walk on a nice spring day, getting some fresh air, you know, walking to the park or something is essential for people's physical and mental uh, I agree, yeah. So Just people don't should do continue it with 40 to do people. that if they can However, he does recommend that people keep a six-foot uh, separation between you and the people around you. Now, that's going to be difficult in a crowded city, and people are probably going to be a little bit upset at each other sometimes for getting too close. But I don't know how you avoid that when you're leaving a building and someone walks up on you and you don't know they're there. Like you said, joggers, you know, come running up past you, which, you know, I would suggest that people work out at home or something and, and not take that out in, into public. But just to be clear... There are some essential businesses that Inslee designated, according to him, were largely through using federal guidelines. So that includes emergency services, healthcare industries, critical manufacturing, child care services, food and agriculture, transportation, financial services, defense industries, and then critical local government operations, including the courts. Restaurants will still be allowed to offer takeout and delivery services. So he's not saying right, that you that's can't. Similar here. Yeah, he's, saying, he's not saying you can't leave your place. There's not a full-scale curfew, although they're asking people to stay home after midnight. But part of the state's strategy, let's be clear, is to slow the rates of infections while the state builds hospital capacity. So it's kind of a race against time, as Inslee put it, to avoid a larger public health crisis. So it's in the interest of all of us to pay attention to what's going on now. This is a two-week prohibition right now on any public gatherings, including funerals, weddings, and religious services, which is stepping very close, Jeff, to the line in terms of separation of church and state. But yeah. in, he made it very clear that this is not uh, an easy choice for him. He doesn't like the idea that he, he's you know interfering with people's personal lives. And I have to admit that he did a pretty good job of sounding the alarm while not panicking people, and that's very important. It's one thing to be totally apathetic about the problem and let it slide. Not, not a good idea right now. We need to be very proactive about taking care of what, what we can right now. But at the same time, putting people into a panic where they're running to the stores and, you know, buying out all the inventory, you still can't get surgical masks, hand sanitizers, rubber gloves, you know, things like that right now. And now, that's in a sense, that's because probably first responders and medical professionals and medical med health care workers are getting first priority on that inventory. But, you know, it's good that he told people that even though these are difficult times, it reminded me a little bit about how, I mean, he's probably been listening to some FDR radio broadcast or something because he even quoted Walt Whitman's poem, Song of Myself, saying, you know, even though this, these are tough times. Try, if you can, to be a good cheer, because we will not desert you. And that was his message from the Washington state government, that sometimes government is there to help you. And this is one of those cases. And so don't fear. They're doing the best they can with the resources that we have as a state, trying to make sure that testing for homeless folks is paid for, that a lot of issues having to do with health care and being, being able to afford these tests not, let alone the availability of them, but the affordability of them, needs to be taken care of by government subsidies. 
And so basically we're all on this together. If, you know, we want to stop with what the governor calls these lingering intrusions into our lives, then we all have to work together as, as a community, especially here in Seattle, and everybody has to be aware of what's going on. He also mentioned the importance of the media, which I was, which was good to hear in these times where he was saying that um, media is also considered an essential industry at this point because it's so important for information to be with the public sure. through, through the news media. Yeah, so the more that we can do that without panicking people, once again, I do worry a little bit about the, the exploitation of the issue not right. only by, you know, scammers and people price gouging, but, you know, sometimes by some of the news networks who just really love to scare people, unfortunately. No doubt. I want to ask you, uh, what is the relationship with uh, the great state of Oregon? You guys are an hour and a half, two hours away in Seattle. The state capital is even closer. How have they been working together? I guess you can even include our friends in British Columbia uh, just to the north of you there. Um, has there been uh, sort of an alliance of sort in these crazy times? I'm not up on everything myself because it's a it's a breaking news story every five minutes, but I would say that the main focus for emergency services and these stay-at-home orders are coming from the governor's office and in my part of the state from the mayor's office and the city council in Seattle. So I mean, the, the governor has definitely taken a lead in this state, and I know that he feels that he's responsible for the people in Washington state, what the governor of Idaho does and uh, Oregon. I'm not sure. I'm hoping that they're talking together right now. I hope, I'm hoping that the people in D.C. are also in on this because Canadians might have some different ideas. They definitely have a different health care system, which sure. I would assume is a little bit more prepared to deal with something like this. But mm-hmm. right now... The governor is the man. I mean, he he is calling the shots. He is in active leadership right now in the state, and it's good to see. I mean, it's good to see that there's somebody that you know. I've, I've met him, so he seems like a pretty nice guy. I can trust him right now. I feel like I'm glad to be in Washington State, where I do have political leaders that have my best interests in mind, and it's nice to see that. Sometimes government actually works for you. People remember that. Talking with Mark Taylor Canfield here on the Jeff Santos Show. Um, how is the uh, situation with schools? I just talked to Melissa Tomlinson, and she was saying that Virginia has canceled them all the way you know, through June, so the kids in Virginia are going to be off until September. Is uh, any talk at all about public schools? Of course, you guys were the, probably the first state in the country to really suffer from this. Um, it, has there been, you know, any discussion about canceling them all the way to June? Nothing official that I've seen so far, although I could have missed something. You know, like I said, there's a breaking story every five minutes. But right, uh, right. the schools are currently closed due to the governor's order. So, and I'm looking online right now at some breaking stories. Uh, Seattle schools announced child care sites during coronavirus closure. Um Lunches, uh, school is out, but the lunch is still in, so there are places where they're offering sack lunches for the kids who relied on the hot lunches in, in the school system. But right now, the this, this schools are closed, and that was a, an order, I believe, for six weeks. So it's been, what, a week or two now? So we still have probably another month that the Seattle schools are officially closed. And in that amount of time, I'm sure there will be plenty of, of discussions about where to go from here and whether to just you know close them for the rest of the year. But right now they're officially closed uh, for a six-week period anyway. Uh, final uh, couple of minutes here with Mark Taylor Canfield. Um, I know that this has affected your world in terms of music. As you said, the people are doing some stuff online. Is the fact that a lot of young people, and, and particularly you know teenagers, those in their early 20s, uh, have they found ways to, to congregate without being in groups of 15 or 20 people? It's got to be either very small groups. Like There are some bands that are playing together, but they're only playing for a couple friends or they're doing online concerts. You know, I mean, it's impossible to avoid people completely, especially if you're a musician. However, what I've found, Jeff, is that I have a lot more time now to spend in the studio because I don't have these obligations to be out in front of the public. So, actually, I'm getting a lot done in the studio, and I've been working with some really talented classical musicians and writing oh, wow. a quartet, actually, about wow. this this well, we're going to have thing. to talk I, about that one next week, uh, Mark, because we're running out of time here. But uh, that's fantastic. 
You are the Renaissance man, so uh, you keep it up. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Be safe out there. Thank you for that uh, really extensive report on Jay Inslee and what he's doing as well. We appreciate that. Take us out of Democracy Watch News. Thanks, Jeff. Take care. Anytime. I want to thank Ron Carter for producing this broadcast. Thank you for listening. Keep on fighting, folks. Stay safe. Stay healthy. My name is Jeff Santos, and right now, my time to say I got to go. The Jeff Santos Show is brought to you by the Massachusetts Nurses Association, the most powerful and effective voice on nursing and health care in Massachusetts. With more than 23,000 members, including the nurses throughout the Southeast region, the MNA is committed to securing access to quality care in all health care settings with safe staffing levels and health care policies that ensure every patient has access to the care and attention they need when it matters most. To find out more about MNA, visit massnurses.org. Broadcasting live from the Ton Federal Credit Union Studios at 14 Church Green, we are AM 1530, WVBS, Middleborough, Taunton, and W259 DD, Middleborough Center, 99.7 FM, Hometown Talk Radio. This edition of the Jeff Santos Show is brought to you by 116,000 members of the Massachusetts Teachers Association. MTA educators are working together every day to give all students a great public education. The MTA, dedicated to funding our future so that every student can attend the high-quality public schools, colleges, and universities our communities deserve. To find out more, visit teacher.org and be sure to follow the MTA on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Here's another way to listen to the Jeff Santos Show. Now you can listen to the Jeff Santos Show 24-7 on any Amazon Echo device. Just say, Alexa, play GAE1 station from TuneIn. Okay, Alexa can be a little bit picky. So please say it exactly like this. Alexa, play GAE1 station from TuneIn. The operative word here is G-A-E-1. You can purchase an Amazon Echo device here on our website. This purchase will help support this station. Remember, you must have access to wireless internet for the Amazon Echo products to operate properly. An Amazon Echo Dot sells for under $40. The Echo Show sells for under $75, and that's my favorite. And remember, our website is revolutionradionetwork.com. Scroll down till you see the Amazon Echo Dot or Amazon Show 5.